Hi, I'm Tom Field, Senior Vice President of Editorial with Information Security Media Group. I'm at the Cybersecurity Summit Brazil 2018, and it's my pleasure to be speaking with Alyssa Torres. She's a Principal SANS instructor, and she formerly was an Incident Response Manager with Cargill. And you can tell me a whole lot more about your background and your experience. Absolutely, I will. I will. Oh, I, I own a company, CyberTor Forensics, um, provide incident response and digital forensic services. So. We're, we're quite busy these I days. Bet. You know, I wanted to talk to you about forensics because one of the, the it's a topic we've discussed for years, and it's been a lot about network forensics. Who's intruded? How have they intruded? What have they extricated? But your point is, with so many different endpoints on networks these days, that kind of changes the game. Talk to me about that. Absolutely. I'll speak to operational tempo of security teams today. Um, oftentimes there's not time to figure out root cause. Root cause, truly, that investigation takes place on the endpoint. By the time, say patient zero, patient number, you know, who knows, 100, uh, starts exhibiting behaviors on the network, you know, the initial vector of infection, you know, entrenchment, privilege escalation, these things have already taken place, and due to operational tempo, a lot of security teams don't have the time to backtrack through, we like to call the kill chain. Mm -hmm. So, um, I just we know that there's a workforce shortage. Um, I will say that technology is helping, but I, I know many of my customers have paid incredible amounts of money for technology that they haven't baselined yet. Yeah. So we may have technology in place that is down the road going to help with monitoring the endpoint, mm -hmm. but it, it is more of an investment than people really budget. That is time, that is a skill set that they need to develop in-house. So these things, there's a lot of obstacles to endpoint forensics. Beyond obstacles, where do you see the biggest gaps in organizations now when it comes to being able to get a handle on their endpoints in the forensics? This is a, this is a good question. Um, you'll not, you're not going to believe this, but it's CIS 1 and 2. So critical control is just knowing the devices that are on your network. That's one. Okay, and they don't know that. We know that. <laughs> no, no. And WannaCry was very helpful in many organizations. Mm -hmm. WannaCry exposed these, the unknown unknown. Well, GDPR would be your friend as well, I would think. Because oh. it's, it's making people understand uh, where their data is, and the data has to come from a device. Yeah, good point. Good point. Shoot. I, and then, the, of course, the second. The second critical control is understanding what software you have rolled out, what's supposed to be on the endpoint. Um, so these things are really going to enhance mm -hmm. endpoint security. Uh, you know, obviously, having a baseline mm -hmm. is going to make the forensics much easier. If you have those skills in-house or you're turning to a third-party service provider, to come and, and ramp you up or figure out what the uh, adversary did. If you have a baseline to share, then you're actually saving money in the end. You can share that with them. So as you get out and talk to a group as you are in Brazil, what's the key takeaway you will have for the audience? Because there's so much to cover in so little time. I, yes, that's true. That's true. Um, I think I have 60 slides oh, and many beautiful screenshots. Uh, but the, I really want to wow them with what artifacts are embedded in Windows. Mm -hmm. um, I, oftentimes as a user, you know, we are introduced to the forensic artifacts left behind by our activities, and it's uh, terrifying. But for a security team, it, it's often somewhat reassuring that the attacker, the adversary, the malware, is leaving behind these traces mm -hmm. that we can use to reconstruct the story of what happened in the system. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that they're at uh, the same time fascinated, excited. We'll see. And maybe a little scared. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll see. So Alyssa, you're learning so much from this, but the adversaries are smart as well, and they learn from their mistakes. Right. Do you find them starting to uh, clean up their rooms a little bit? Uh, absolutely. My anti-forensics techniques are alive and well, even anti-acquisition. So we may uh, connect to a machine remotely in the environment and think that we're pulling back a solid data set, but it's been subverted either by rootkit behaviors on the operating system or just outright, uh, say, 
uh, termination of our acquisition tools, our services that, that we've been relying on. So we get this faulty data back and we think the machine is clean. These things are uh, proof of concept, but any proof of concept has been out in the wild for at least a couple of years. So, so you can think you're on top of your game today, but the game's going to change tomorrow. Yeah, it's true. Exciting times for you. It is. It is. Continue to adapt. Alyssa, I appreciate your time and insight. Thanks so oh, much. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Tom. We've been talking about forensics on the endpoint. I've been speaking with Alyssa Torres. She's a principal instructor with SANS. For Information Security Media Group, I'm Tom Field. Thank you very much.